Here's an idea of how to fit an antenna for 40 metres into a fairly small space. Stay tuned and I'll show you all about it. I have a very interesting email indeed from Dave, uh, EI2HPB. Uh, Dave is over in the Republic of Ireland and he emailed me asking a question about an idea he's got for a 40 meter loop in a small garden space. So Dave wrote and he said, I've been thinking about trying a 40 meter loop at my home QTH with the supports available to me. It would have to be a rectangle and not a triangle or a square. I'm thinking of the bottom leg two meters over the garden, just over a wooden fence and trying two seven meter sides and a 14 meter top and bottom with approximately 42 meters of total wire. Let's have a look then to see what Dave's loop would look like. And uh, as we can see here from the diagram, what we have is basically the very bottom of the loop, but that's at the fence height level. And then it would be supported on the sides by uh, two fiberglass poles. So the very top of each pole would be nine meters above ground and they would be 14 meters apart. So the, the antenna itself would be basically uh, rectangular in shape uh, two seven meter long side, tall sides, and two 14 meter uh, bits of wire there. So altogether about 42 meters. And we're going to assess what the likely results are from feeding the loop in three different places. So we're going to look at the first two options. The first one is where we feed the loop here in the uh, the center of one side, it doesn't matter which side it is. The other option is to feed it at the, at the bottom of the center wire. And that'll be of course at around two meters above ground level at the, the fence height. Let's have a look then, first of all, at the, the, the bit, the, uh, the option, I should say, where we feed the loop halfway down one of the sides. So here we go. We've got uh, an impedance, uh, modeled impedance of around 88 ohms. So I'll call it 90 ohms. And we can see here from the far field plot that uh, at five degrees elevation, we've basically got a, uh, an antenna that's vertically polarized. So in effect, what we have here is a uh, very similar performance to a vertical, except of course, if we look back at the diagram, we can see that according to the left hand, uh, the azimuth pattern there, that we've got an antenna which has a bias and the bias, uh, the, 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 the largest uh, area of current is basically going through the loop. So if we look at the loop like this, you're looking at the rectangular straight on, the current is going through the plane of the loop. And that's where basically that minus four dBi comes from. That's, that's the area of biggest current. Off the sides, a bit less, we've got about minus 10 and a half dBi, all right? Now, if you had like a quarter, uh, sorry, quarter way vertical, then you'd expect it to be around minus five and a half to minus six dBi omnidirectional, all right? So there's a gain, there's, there's a greater gain, a little bit more for your money going through the plane of the loop, all right? And that's at five degrees elevation. If we then have a loop fed at the bottom center location, then we've got a slightly higher impedance, but again, just, just above 100 ohms, 109 ohms according to MMANA. We've now got an antenna, it's like a dipole, a low dipole. You can see here from the far field plot on the right, we've got a big bubble of RF going up and a fairly omnidirectional antenna, like a, like a low dipole would be really. And the gain we can expect from here, well, about seven and a half dBi at 75 degrees. I've modeled it at 75 degrees. Elevation is kind of where I would benchmark your 500 mile hop, basically, sub 500 mile hop. Now, a low inverted V dipole, We'd expect to get it around sort of a full size one, probably around five or six dBi at 75 degrees. So in this case, we're looking at about seven and a half dBi. So it's a very, very strong performer at those high angles. So you feed it halfway down the center. We've got basically an antenna which is vertically polarized or is dominated by vertical polarization. You feed it halfway along the bottom. We've got an antenna which behaves like a low dipole and is basically horizontally polarized. So what then are the comparisons between these two ways of locations, I should say, of feeding this antenna? We've got in blue, the loop fed at the center bottom, the horizontally polarized dominated loop, compared with the one fed uh, halfway down the, uh, the side, one of the sides. This is the five degrees. And basically the, the loop that's fed at the center bottom is about 60 BI down on average at five degrees compared to the one that's fed along the side halfway down the side, which is vertically polarized. So an S point in it, the higher angle. So if we're trying to work people within sort of 500 miles, we can see there's a bigger difference. Going back to the diagram then, and we can see the antenna is fed at the, the, the uh, center of the bottom wire, which is vert mainly horizontally polarized, is much, much stronger at that higher elevation angle compared to the one that's vertically polarized, between 17 and 22 
DBI. So that's basically between three to four S units. So the, the loop that's fed along the center, the bottom center, is about an S point down on average than the, the one fed along the halfway down the uh, one of the sides in terms of the low angle elevation. But when it comes to the higher angle elevation, that loop is much stronger than the vertically polarized dominated loop by about three to four S units. Don't forget this loop is only about two meters off the ground as well. So it's not exactly way up in the air. Okay, which is why it's good if you've got, uh, if you're limited by height and limited by space, because the, the overall horizontal space of this antenna is 40 meters, which is about two thirds of uh, the width which you'd normally have for a flat top dipole. So that can't be bad. The other option that Dave wanted to look at was feeding uh, the loop in one of the bottom corners. So we can see from this diagram here, we feed it on this, in this case, the bottom left hand corner. And we've got a very similar impedance of around 95 ohms. Now let's see what happens then with this antenna in terms of its performance at the lower elevation angle and the higher elevation angle compared to the other two antennas we've just looked at. And if we're looking at the five degrees elevation, we can see that the one we just looked at now, the bottom corner one in black is only just down, only just down fractionally uh, compared to the uh, the vertically polarized loop that's fed halfway down the side. And uh, the center bottom one is just down on those. So effectively, if you feed it in the bottom corner in the real world, there's probably very little difference between that antenna and the one which you feed halfway down the side when it comes to low angle elevation. Let's look now at higher angle elevation, at 75 degrees elevation in black again, the one fed in the bottom corner is about 10 dBi better than the vertically polarized one in red, the one that's dominated by vertical polarization. So that means it's about probably around two S points better. And compared to the one in blue, which is the one fed center along the bottom, the one fed in the bottom corner is in this instance about 10 dBi away from that. So effectively, it's kind of halfway between the two. If you think about it, a bit like comparing a, uh, if you've got an N-fed half wave, you can have it as maybe uh, an inverted V, you can have it as a uh, vertical or as an inverted L. Think about this last option as the inverted L, all right? Where it gives you a little bit of both. It gives you very respectable low angle performance and much improved high angle performance compared with the, uh, with the in this case, the loop that's fed halfway down the center. So you get a, a bit of both worlds with this one dominant, this one, I should say, fed in the bottom corner. Thanks for watching. There'll be another chance to subscribe over there somewhere. And there'll be a video coming up over there somewhere probably for you. Take care. I will catch you soon on the air, I hope. 73 from the south coast of the UK. Bye for now.